Hey guys, Real Spartan here. Welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. And you may be wondering why this is being uploaded at a very weird time. Well, guess who thought they had more uh, videos recorded than they actually did? Answer was me. So, yep, I've already picked out a lineup. We're going into the cove and doing this cleanse because I do not want this hero's ring. I want something that'll actually use and not just sell for money immediately. So, uh, Miguel, the bounty hunter that I named. Uh, has a campus helmet, so he's gonna have increased stress healed, and he's gonna be dealing more melee damage. Abomination has stun amulet and seer stone for uh, more scouting and stunning because manacle is a pretty good stun skill. I mean, you can hit rank three. Jester is going to be both stress healing and bleeding with the bleed amulet because that's a pretty good chance to bleed, like 140%, and he's not going to be bleeding because of this. And uh. Occultist is double healing. Haven't increased his uh, armor, have I? Hmm. Hang on while I quickly go do that. Okay, that's all good. Now let's start this mission. I have a feeling that I'm going to be needing more torches than usual for some reason. Don't know why, just taking a completely random guess. Sometimes my random guesses are actually correct, and I will need them. Thralls will explode if left for too long. No, they generally just create a whole bunch of totems. Of course, going to have to go down to this room down the bottom left in case there is, like, a fight here and I miss out on it. And that is a good amount of loot from these fish. A lot of people do not realize how much loot these fish give. I mean, if you go to a champion level dungeon pitch black and you find these things, they will most of the time give you, like, very rare to ancestral trinkets. And I was right, there was a fight here. Excellent. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Occultist will be doing some good damage, hopefully, with the buff against the Eldritch. I could harvest and, uh, attempt to kill this stupid snail quickly. You know what, I'll go for it. I mean, my bleeds aren't going to fail. There's, like, only a 10% chance that they actually will fail. So, uh, 0%. Practically 0%. In my experience, at least. And everyone knows my experience is wrong. I was considering giving uh, the bounty hunter the stun amulet because he has the two strongest uh, stun skills in the game, technically, tied with the Houndmaster. Houndmaster is only better because he has the cudgel weight, and the bounty hunter does not have a specialized stunning trinket. If he did, then I'd pretty much use a him over the Houndmaster any time. In case you do not know, I do not really like the Houndmaster because, granted, I will use him in DD2 because that's where he's the best at, but other than that, he's not really that good. I mean, his skills, his skills do have a lot of mark synergy, but the downside of it is that his base damage is so low that the mark means practically nothing. I mean, he can hit any slot with Hound's Rush, and he has Hound's Harry for a good AoE, but he ge just generally doesn't have anything else. Okay, so this guy's dead. This thing has zero speed, so we're going to, of course, spend some time stress healing and normal healing. We only need, like, one turn to heal because of the huge healing buff. You see that 15 on a 0 to 14 skill, no less. The reason I'm bringing out these guys is because they are kind of the lowest levels out of all of our units. I say our units when I say mine. I don't know why. Also, that's how much crit the bounty hunter has on a average. Also, go subscribe to Sapphire Yoshi. I mean, I don't know if he's made anything recently. I'm friends with him, but I do not watch his content because he plays mostly Nintendo games. And I play mostly Darkest Dungeon. We have a Terraria world with a random game critic. We should really continue that. Would anyone be interested in watching that? Like, we play that during our... Goddamn Collector. We play that during our time, like, we don't do it much, but we, we like, did it once, and, uh, we didn't record anything of it, because we were like, three of us have YouTube channels, and we were like, okay, let's just not bother recording this, because who wants to watch Terraria? But I'm considering doing that, or at least doing some Terraria with Dem, if not that. So yeah, uh, type in the comments if you want to watch Terraria. It would of course be edited down like a, like super edited down so you only see the interesting things, because I like doing videos like that. So back to Darkest Dungeon, uh, Collector. 
pretty good here, except I kind of screwed over, screwed myself over there because I meant to, I didn't want uh, that man at arms to die so that I could use beast bile to hit both of these units. But okay, let's hope for a crit. Okay, no crit. I guess I'm gonna have to spend a time using manacles on a uh, collected highway. Yes, spend a time, Spartan. You are truly the most genius member of the darkest dungeon community. I get things wrong sometimes. Not frequently, but sometimes. I'm not perfect, no one's perfect. You know what, let's get a stun on you, Collector. An uppercut would be good on this Collected Highwayman. Uh, how long is this buff going to last for? Not very long. Let's refresh it. If I can uppercut this guy, oh, I guess that strategy's dead now. I was gonna say, if I can uppercut this guy, then I'll... Two and three slot AoE attacks that cause damage over time will hit both of these guys. At least we'll hit both of these, these two now. I do that when I'm uh, just hitting, slapping the collector's face with my mouse. This is being recorded at 7 a.m., which is the earliest I've been up in quite a while. Yes, I've had sleep issues. You may think, oh, 7 a.m., that's nice and early, except I woke up today at 7 p.m. Really, I missed a double blight. Oh well. How high are these guys blight resist? 40%, okay, that's... That makes some sense. You know what? Get back, you. So we're gonna take a, uh, most likely a critical hit headhunt. Anyone remember back when this move was called Gnawing Feeling? I like those days. Nice dodge. It's still a 16 dodge even when using ha having a uh, dodge debuff from the trinket that he's using. Okay, so let's see. You do not need anything. Let's deal a bit more damage to the man at arms. We're gonna cleanse a quirk over here, which is an excellent reward for fighting a collector. Okay, they're both dead. Yep, four damage. Stun. Do I want to mark? No, because if I mark, he probably won't have time for another thing. Unless the abomination goes first and gets off another stun. Ah, fuck it, I'm a ballsy guy. Sometimes, at least. Going for a big gamble here, rolling those dice, as the bounty hunter would say. Let's weaken and curse him just in case, even though he's going to use collect, uh, collect call. How did you... You have five speed, the abomination should have outsped you just then. He has nine. Uh, sometimes I really hate my own uh, decisions that I make. Then again, when don't I hate my own decisions? Answer, when I made that Dark Dungeon, uh, Heart of Darkness thing. Both of them, in fact. That's pretty much all I'm known for. Which is good, it's my most popular video, the, uh, the Super Bard of the Beast Leper video. I really like that one. I wish I recorded it in higher bitrate, though. This was back before I discovered using the use of bitrate. And my headphone just fell out of my ear. I do not like that. Nice dodge, shoe god. Your weird name is made up for by your ability to not get hit. And let's attempt to kill this Vestal. Do not collect coal when there's only one missing collector. I need to kill you faster. You know what, let's battle ballad. I don't think Jess did not go before the collector as well. Hey, are you kidding me? Stop using collect coal. You are merely dragging out this fight and this episode. I feel like I should just cut this whole fight out because it's so pointless. Except I shouldn't because then you would miss out what happens. And isn't that why you watch me? To see what happens? Let's attempt to mark you. Get out of here. Okay, a stun on the man at arms. He should go before these guys, so he will not collect coal. And then they'll both die, and we should... Hopefully Miguel will get a critical hit on this guy and take about 2,000 health off. So that he'll be on negative 1,950 health. I'm, of course, using sarcasm here. When don't I use sarcasm? Answer, always. Yeah, that was just a... That was, like, the worst joke I've ever made. And then I will proceed to make an even worse one. No, I won't. I've been playing Hearthstone recently. I said I would, and then I did. 
So, yeah. It's pretty good. The only money I've spent on it, like actual money, is the welcome pack, because it's like, it's like 10 packs for pretty cheap price compared to all the others. I'm not spending any more money on Hearthstone, though. I refuse, because I am, am very cheap. Okay, stun on you, and the bounty hunter has like 11 speed right now, so... Uh, please crit. 20, come on. Oh, at least he didn't do anything on his turn, that's excellent. And you're going to die, so you're going to die. You know what, let's heal. Woohoo, at least, you know what, that was probably the best result, because he did get stress healing as well. Do I want to gamble on going before the collector? To get some stress healing. A little part of me is saying do it, and I am agreeing with that part of me. Okay, so one of you, go before the collector. Thank you. My greed was rewarded. Mind if I roll greed? This expedition at least promises success. Now what's the worst quirk we got? Cophobe. Probably should have had that removed. Uh, bad gamble, love interest. Light sensitive is bad, witness isn't so bad. Let's try and remove co -phobe. Guilty conscience. You know what, that's not a bad one to remove either. Was that locked in? I wasn't really paying attention. And scout. We should be getting scouts left, right, and center here. And hunger. I'm gonna enter this fight in 70, like, 73 life, so... Not go that good, like, not as good as it could possibly be, but we'll accept it because it's just, like, four stupid brigands who have run of this land. So we must keep to the side path. The hamlet is pretty damn far away since we're in the cove. You know what, these missions are said to take one week or so of game time. So how long does it take to travel here, I wonder? just to get to the cove, because I'm pretty sure walking through these damn places does not take, like, weeks. Slice and dice. Such a terrible assault could not be left unanswered. Oh, what a terrible assault. Uh, let's try to heal Bounty Hunter. 18, that's pretty good. Mildly adequate. Okay, so how much damage are you taking? You're taking 5, you have 5 health, you're taking 5, and you have 8 health. Um, let us transform and use Rake to kill both of these guys. Rake 1, no less, because I didn't upgrade those skills. Can't flashbang from back here, let us mark then. Reduces his protection and not his dodge, so that does literally nothing other than boost up the Bounty Hunter's attack if he goes before him, which, uh, he probably... No, he probably will. Abomination and Jester are gonna go first anyway, so we'll get a stress heal off. Okay, so we're gonna actually transform here. What's your speed? Six. So, Absolution. Absolutely the right skill. Is Absolution upgraded? Yeah, it is. Okay. That is good. I know my own strategies and what I would do, and I would upgrade that as soon as possible. Probably the best skill for healing in the game. Of course. I was just wondering how long it would take before I got a zero. 21. Excellent. Forgot to up the light. Oh well. That was probably the right thing to do anyway since the uh, A-bomb has light sensitive. Is the game running slower than normal? I keep wondering if it is, and it, it probably actually isn't. I haven't got a hunger proc at least yet. I should use the keyboard shortcuts, instead of just randomly clicking. And I wanted to use a shovel on that. I don't know why, I don't know how you can be in a situation where opening it with your bare hands means that it has nothing inside it, but opening it with a shovel means that there was something inside it. I probably should have bought more shovels. I kind of forgot that the cove needed those as well. The way is lit, the path is clear. Run away, cults things, for I am your fear. I literally stole that from Tear of Grace. Tear of Grace said that he is going to be revisiting Darkest Dungeon in a video. For console, of course. Because it's, like, new and stuff. 
So if you like Darkest Dungeon, uh, I'll actually never mind. If you don't like Tear of Grace, I'll just inform you when he makes a video. But Tear of Grace is my favorite YouTuber of all time, even better than a uh, Critical, in my opinion at least. And Critical is wonderful. So yeah, if you like, just just like, if you like stuff, then uh, go watch Tear of Grace. He did a Darkest Dungeon thing earlier, like back when Dark's Dungeon was a lot earlier on. So yeah, that's still up on his channel if you want to watch it. I'm just selling out for Tear of Grace. Which I'm okay with. Tear of Grace is pretty damn good. So back to uh, actual things. You're taking... Let's see. Yeah, that's five damage. A two will kill. Got a three. Nice. Let us... Stun you... And, uh, I wish I had Flashbang available to hit this guy. He has 58% protection, we'll need to reduce that. I kind of half expected that to fail since I didn't upgrade it. But, I should be optimistic sometimes. Anyone want to hear a Hearthstone, sto Hearthstone story? Probably not, but... Too bad, it's my channel. And if you don't like it, you can complain in the comments about how I need to improve my video, and I will probably listen. Impressive. I am mean like that. Uh, so yeah, I play two Hearthstone decks. I play Paladin, like Swarm Paladin, which basically just relies on my opponent not having any AoE spells or things at all. It works usually well because I have Cultist Leader for draw power, and uh, What's the other card that I use in that deck? I forget. There's another card that boosts up stuff when units die. It's not Usher of Souls because I'm using Paladin. I use that in my uh, Shaman deck. Or whatever it's called. Warlock, maybe. Yeah, but that's my Cthulhu deck. And I pretty much just explained my other deck right then and there with that description, so yeah. So we're pretty much uh, out of inventory space. I wish I had a double scout there so I could actually see if I had to use the shovel or not, because I don't want to use it. Did I pack too little food? Or did I already get a food proc? No, I did already get a food proc. I forgot. Stupid me. And even before I said I didn't get a food proc yet. Yes, I did. And we're full on inventory again. At least we got another shovel. Okay, so move stone. Not going to be using that. Okay, good. I'm not wasting my time and chances on food procs. Even though there is treasure, but granted, we have full inventory. Thirsty as hell. And I'm almost out of drink. This drink has been here for two hours. It's still surprisingly cold, probably because I put it in the freezer. Oh, I did not mix that properly. Ugh. I'm drinking cordial, which is an Australian thing. It's kind of like Kool-Aid, what from what I know, except you mix it with water, because it's like, you get like two liters. What was that sound? I don't know. And I accidentally did it for him instead of him. God damn it. So yeah, cordial is you mix it with water because you get 2 litres of cordial concentrate, which makes approximately 10 litres of cordial, because the recommended mix between concentrate and water is 1 fifth, and I usually mix a 1 fourth. I think I accidentally put like 1 third, and uh, yeah, it's way too strong. Yeah, don't drink cordial concentrate, it's too sweet. It's so sweet and acidic. That's, like, just how it tastes. Basically, if you go to Australia, uh, don't take my advice on anything. I don't know. Do people really care about Australia? It's a nice place. You probably wouldn't want to live here. It is spring right now, which means that if you're living in anywhere in the world, it's still too hot for you. The only time anywhere else in the world is uh, willing to come to Australia is in winter, where it's nice and uh, cool for them freezing for us. You know what? Uh, if you do not, if you live in America, this probably won't make much sense to you, but 
winter here, it gets down to 19 degrees and we absolutely freeze. 19 degrees Celsius, that is. Which is basically something like... I, I don't know the conversion method for a Celsius to Fahrenheit because, honestly, who uses Celsius? I mean, who uses Fahrenheit other than America, really? I'm pretty sure no one. But yeah, uh, just go into Google, type Celsius to Fahrenheit, and you'll see how cold that is. And then you'll say, hey, wait a minute, that's not cold, that's pretty warm. And, you're like, and we're like, you're right. We still find it cold, though. Because we're used to, like, 40 degree Celsius summer, which goes above 100 Fahrenheit. So yeah, if you like the cold, don't come here. So enough talking about things that aren't Darkest Dungeon, let's talk about Darkest Dungeon. Or maybe we won't. Getting a lot of crits here, it seems. Either that or I'm not paying attention, which is entirely a possibility. Brought low and driven into the bandage. Anyone want to hear a story about Overwatch? Because I am, like, I have nothing to say about Darkest Dungeon because I'm not thinking properly. Almost out of torches as well. So one time I was playing Overwatch, uh, really, oh, god damn it, I'm out of those things, I'm out of herbs, gotta get more. So yeah, once I was playing Overwatch, and just a normal quick play match, this was bef this was in between the uh, season gap, it was after the update for Ana, it was between season 1, like, season 1 had ended and season 2 wasn't up yet. So I was playing quick play because everyone had to play quick play because there was literally nothing else you could do. I mean, there was Brawl mode, but who uses that? And I was just playing normally, doing my normal matches, and guess who I saw? If you guessed Muzelk, uh, you were correct, because Muzelk is Australian too, so we obviously have to get placed in the same servers, and uh, I am approximately the same skill level as Muzelk. I mean, I'm lower competitive rank, but that's because I solo queue and I don't play competitive much. But yeah, I met Muzelk on Overwatch. Uh, we were on enemy teams though, so I couldn't hear him say anything, but it was Muzelk. Confirms. He had the same level and everything. Didn't get into one of his videos because he wasn't recording. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention if he was with anyone like Lil Brad or Stylosa. Oh, hey guys, Stylosa here. Here to say, uh, fuck you. The real Spartan is the worst Darkest Dungeon player of all time. Uh, Heart of Darkness kills don't matter. Okay, bye. That was probably the worst impression ever, but I can't tell. Because my voice, from what I hear, sounds literally nothing like what it sounds in the recording. Maybe it's my microphone? It could be. In fact, if you go back to the first uh, video I made with my new microphone, which was the Crash Bandicoot 2 series, yes, I played through Crash Bandicoot 2. It was pretty good. Um, I can, I could, you could hear me talk about how uh, it wasn't perfect. It's pretty good, but not perfect. Success, so okay, so we're gonna walk back here. Or is it merely a trick of the light? Yes, the trick of the light, we get it. I wish the narrator had more lines. Wang Jun should really do more. And we did not find a uh, secret room throughout this whole thing, which is sad. Also, out of herbs, so looks like the jester is gonna be on low speed. Not going to be in a hundred light. Is basically going to be generally screwed. You know what? Let's pitch black this bitch. Hey, look. A torch. Probably not going to use this torch. Let's not get surprised, shall we? Oh, wait. We can't be surprised because we scouted. Kind of forgot about that. I guess I'm not thinking. Really not thinking. Okay, so the bounty hunter getting stressed is probably the best the best thing that can happen because he has uh, extra stress heals received in camp. Doesn't someone else have resilient as well? No, we have irrepressible instead of not resilient. I keep getting mixed up because uh, back in my first playthrough I had Jade who had resilient and I thought he had irrepressible and uh, yeah, I got that mixed up. So that's a 10 normal attack, so GG bounty hunter, you're almost dead. So let's uh, mitigate that damage by force, and let's speed up the party. What's, what camping skills do you have, Jester Man? 
And uh, you're already on 60 stress. Oh yeah, I got the ones I wanted. So we have turn back time, so we're pretty much set. Zero, really. Bleed, really. Well, RNG is just being a bitch right now, which sucks, but at least these guys can't deal any actual damage. I mean, they can deal ones, but that's pretty much nothing. You know what, I'm not gonna use these bandages anyway. Might as well get rid of them, throw them in the trash. Okay, so you're gonna take three damage, you're gonna take a bit of damage. You know what, I'm greedy, let us do this. Also to stop him getting a resolve check. Resolve checks are not good. Ceremonial cut, that's death's door. Abomination should go first. Or we can get an 18. That's just always good. You shall not fall today. You fall when I say you will fall. And that is never. So, fight's over, pretty much. I mean, he's going to die and we can just kill this guy in one hit. A singular strike. Nice. So, yep, let us remove some more stress. Yeah, he should be on zero stress in no time. There we go. That's all we need. And a no secret room, so let's dump off this shovel. So, yep. Time for camping. Do we have a skill to remove the nighttime ambush? I don't think we do. No, we don't. Did put that in. Okay, don't really care. Don't even need to use turn back time. So, uh. Might as well just use encourage. Except we don't have encourage. Okay. Turn back time it is. And, uh. Is there any skills we can get in case we get nighttime ambushed? You know what? Plan takedown in case we get attacked by a ghoul. Can ghouls even appear on level 1 missions? I don't think so. No, they can't. They remove that feature. Spirits are lifted. I remember back when ghouls could appear on level 1 missions. And instead of inflicting bleed with rend, they inflicted blight. You may think I'm lying, but I'm not. You may think I'm lying about a lot of things, but I only really tell the truth. Like, why would I need to lie? To sound impressive? I don't sound impressive. What are you talking about? Also, just randomly blabbing on at the mouth so I don't have to cut this out so it's easier on me in editing. In case you did not know. And Watteo got, like, syphilis. You got rabies, not bad. Hard Noggin, which is good because he's a healer. Light sensitive, not good. Bad gambler, don't care. Thanatophobia, don't care. And Warren's Explorer. Didn't you have, like, Warren something as well? You probably did. Okay, Faith is just stuck in the gambling hole. Week 11 out of 91, but we have 80 weeks left. We're not going to take that long. I guarantee it. Uh, Ruins Adventure, Automatonophobia, Faithless. That's not too bad. Night Owl, Clutch Hitter. Those aren't that good. Make up your damn mind. Ruins Tactician, not bad either. Evasive. Could go Evasive. Uh, evasive isn't bad. Plutomania wouldn't really affect her much because she's just going to interact with those things anyway. But nevertheless, I'll decide that off camera. And Gambler's Charm. Let us sell this because I am never going to use it. And uh, I'm going to trinkets. So. Uh, Marta Seal. You know what, I'll grab one of those. You never know, I might try for some risky business against the Heart of Darkness again. So I'll see you guys in the next video where we will be going and fighting the Necromancer. The first boss. See you guys then. Bye.